Times are really hard. There's something about Harry Potter that makes life richer. It's a strong bond that we'll always have. We're family, and <laughs> we will always be part of each other's life. Welcome to The Hollywood Scholar. I'm Jed Morgan, and I just finished the 20th anniversary special on HBO Max for Harry Potter, The Return to Hogwarts. And I gotta say, I, I quite enjoyed it. It was it was pretty good. Um, not as good as I was expecting, especially after how great I felt the Friends reunion earlier this year, uh, last year, was. So, it, it, a little disappointing to me. I didn't feel the heart or the character that the original films had for me. It, it didn't restore many of those old emotions. Uh, Harry Potter was hugely influential in my high school, middle school years. I have a lot of heartfelt feelings for it, so they have not really a lot of those brought back. was a little disappointing. Overall, it was good. Harry Potter just was so special to me. I mean, uh, Emma Watson made me into a man. She was my uh, first celebrity crush as a kid, and I, I'm not a huge fan of her politically, let's say, but she's still, like, <laughs> I probably have still a little bit of a crush on her. So anything she's involved in, with, I'm, I'm going to watch. So it's part of the reason I actually watch this. But, no, I, and besides that, just besides her, uh, I really related to the character of Ron beyond just, the, you know, the red hair, uh, just his character. He was me at that age. So seeing him thrust in this world was re really special for me. And uh, I really quite enjoyed. So it was... This world means a lot to me, and I feel like we haven't getting, seen that world since Deathly Hallows Part 2, even the Fantastic Beast movies I didn't feel were all that great. The first one was fine, I guess. The second one wasn't good. But this didn't quite capture the magic. It was cool to see all these people after so many years coming back, to see them going back to Hogwarts, seeing them see, uh, meet each other again, and just see how they've aged. Some of them have not aged well. But other the uh, others of them have aged beautifully. So, but uh, their interactions were by far the best part of it, and the documentary style that they had for the interviews worked really well for what they were trying to go for, which is such a massive cast they couldn't really go the friends route where they were all in the same room the whole time. They kind of had to divide it up individually, so it made sense their decisions and uh, the behind the heat, uh, behind the scenes stuff. I really enjoyed, like the interview between Daniel Radcliffe and Chris Columbus on how they made it, some of the uh, decisions made behind the camera. I, As uh, an aspiring filmmaker myself, I always enjoy behind the scenes stuff like that and the technical aspect of making a film and decisions made and stuff like that. So that part was really interesting to me. Again, not really emotionally compelling, but technically compelling. So I did enjoy that aspect of it. The one big takeaway for me and the big drawback to this was J.K. Rowling was in it, but was only used from clips from a 2019 interview. And every time she came on screen, the few times she did, they had it up in the corner taken from a 2019 interview. And that was just a stark reminder of the cloud hanging over this project where they didn't even invite her back. The cloud of cancel culture permeated through this. And it is different than most things in Hollywood where it did have some heart to it and was well made. But even it's not free of the political leanings of Hollywood. So that was really disappointing. And it just, every single person who was featured in this special owes their entire lives, the shape of their, their existence to JK Rowling. So it feels really disingenuous for them to virtually ignore her in a lot of aspects and not even invite her to thank her for this world that she created that enabled all these young people to shine as they did these beautiful people and this isn't against the cast they didn't make the decision but more the producers where they're just like oh yeah thanks for the world and all the money the dollar dollar bills y'all but peace out you you wrong thinker and it, it took me out of it every single time she came on screen or every time she should have been on screen it was just very disheartening and very disingenuous that they're just like well, fuck you. It, it, 
I think that may have been the one of the biggest reasons why it wasn't as heartfelt for me as the Friends reunion, because the original Friends creators were still involved, at least the living ones. And it just wasn't great to see them treating her this way. Speaking of uh, the living ones, their tributes to the actors and producers who had passed was really sweet to see. Alan Rickman, that death hit me really hard when that happened. Richard Harris, that happened long before I was in, involved in the series or even knew what it was. So it, it was a very, very sweet, compelling tribute to him, but didn't super affect me because I, I didn't experience that grief with the cast when it happened. And all, all the other ones, too, that just just her. I didn't know that uh, Mrs. Malfoy, the actress playing her, uh, Helen McCroy, I believe her name is, I didn't realize that she had passed and it was cancer just this last year. And that's, that's really sad. I think it was this last year. And, you know, everyone really cared about each other. They were really a family on set and you could really see that through their interactions. But that's kind of all I've got. So if you're a fan of Harry Potter, definitely check it out. Don't expect to come away crying or come away emotionally devastated by it. Kind of go into it be like, oh, that's interesting. That's cool. But definitely check it out if you're interested. And that's all I have for today. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. Anon. If you like what I do here and want to see good, compelling stories that Hollywood will no longer give you, check out my book series, Odyssey of a Phoenix, a mythological epic about philosophy, morality, and modern day mental illness issues. Books one, Down in Flames, and book two, Apocalypse Then, currently on sale. Book three, Kill the Dark, coming soon.